Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for February 21st, 2014. It's currently 9.30 a.m. and it's Friday. We are ready for the weekend and it's going to be absolutely beautiful weekend. We just have to get through some heavy rain for this afternoon and evening. That could create some flash flooding, wind damage, and also put additional weight on some roofs where you already have heavy wet snow. It's been that type of winter, right? Well, we have temperatures throughout the region ranging from the lower to mid 30s over the far northern interior, mid to upper 30s to the north and west of New York City, uh, upper 30s in New York City itself because we have plenty of fog in place with visibility below a mile in some locations. Now where the fog is cleared up, well, you can clearly see where that is happening. Notice in Philadelphia, we're around 40 degrees. New Jersey coast, lower to mid 50s. Clearly, we are having skies clear out here. And eventually, as we move on through the day, temperatures will jump into the upper 40s to lower 50s over much of the New York City metropolitan area, the northern interior, portions of Philadelphia, north and west of Philadelphia. However, from central New Jersey on south, Look for temperatures to spike into the mid to upper 50s ahead of an advancing cold front as these low clouds and fog starts to burn off. So really it's a boundary, in a way, of where you're going to have the best instability for thunderstorms this afternoon. And this is really key. We're really going to now cast this or watch this evolve. Because what we're seeing in the surface observations is what I suggested a few days ago. This snowpack is going to create havoc when trying to forecast for thunderstorms or heavy rain because it's creating what's called a stable atmosphere at the surface. Long story short, you're either going to get very heavy rain this afternoon or a very windy thunderstorm with wind gusts over 40 miles per hour. And I'll show you why I'm concerned about that in just a moment. Here we have on the radar <laughs> plenty of heavy rain on the way. We have a nice solid line developing over western Pennsylvania, western New York. This is going to continue to march east and move into the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area by this afternoon. I like between 1 and 3 p.m. For, for eastern Pennsylvania and western New Jersey and 3 to 5 p.m. For, for, for eastern New Jersey and the New York City metropolitan area on to Connecticut. And this rain will continue on until about the evening hours, about 8, 9 p.m., we should be all done with all the showers and everything. Now notice one very key point with this radar here. See all the yellows and oranges are focused over the southeast? This is where all your instability really is going to be. This is where your best potential for thunderstorms will be. However, I can't rule out a few thunderstorms over southern New Jersey. Some pretty strong ones at that. The ability for the atmosphere to destabilize is going to be the best over central and southern New Jersey and over southeastern Pennsylvania. If you're in the New York City metropolitan area or the northern interiors, this is pretty much a heavy rain event, which unfortunately with all the snow is going to lead to the potential for some localized urban flooding and also the potential for a lot of weight to be added onto your roofs. So I hope that you have already cleared off all that snow and that just hope that it melts off and just dissipates and goes away. Because you add water to a very heavy, wet snowpack, and, well, that weight gets exponentially heavier. So this is going to be a problem for this afternoon and evening if you haven't taken care of that issue. Aside from that, look for poor visibility for, tomorrow, for this evening's rush hour, major ponding on the roadways, and, of course, some localized flooding. On the infrared satellite picture... I wanted to show you this because it kind of shows you the dynamic nature of this cold front. Remember where I told you that the, the colder the cloud tops, the lighter the colors, the colder the cloud tops, the colder the cloud tops, the stronger the lifting. This is really important because if you have a stable at atmosphere at the lower levels of the atmosphere because of all the snow and the snowpack, aloft it's unstable. So why is this important? Well, what it does is it creates elevated thunderstorms. They're not your traditional thunderstorms because they feature more heavy rain, strong winds. But considering what we have in place here, that's not a good idea. Because you've got strong winds dealing with ice and, and snow on these power lines and under these roofs. Then you throw in very heavy rain. It's a recipe for some structural damage. So use some caution and beware of that. The other good news though is that notice all the strongest lifting 
is clearly focused over the southeast where we have some strong severe thunderstorms developing. You see a telltale sign of a dynamic thunderstorm line setting up over Georgia and portions of Florida. Developing a nice little curly cue here and intensifying. Keep it there. We don't need it. We are going to be dealing with some heavy rain though. Now, I wanted to show you this. This is the mid-levels, 850 millibars. Now, obviously, it's very cold. You see these little triangles and lines here? The triangle stands for 50 knots, and the lines stand for 5, this one's 5, and that's 10. Why is that important? Well, basically what this is showing me is that aloft at 850 millibars, you have winds anywhere from 50, or well, let's say 40, to 65 knots. Those winds are moving right over the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area. Now you combine that with a cold front right here, enhancing lifting, that lifting taps into these winds. The processes of the atmosphere, not to get too technical, basically in these thunderstorms and showers, transports this air to the surface, and that's where you get the potential for very strong wind gusts. So, this afternoon i'm not expecting widespread severe thunderstorms here but i am expecting strong wind gusts and very heavy rainfall so if you're traveling this evening or this afternoon use some caution be prepared and don't be surprised if you run into a wind windswept rainstorm for about an hour maybe two hours as this line moves through the good news is that clearly on the wave paper satellite picture where we have some significant moisture transport up the east coast notice the winds are moving from west to east that means pacific air and that means we are going to have a warm weekend and we surely need it before the cold air comes back again which is setting up right here so enjoy this weekend get out enjoy it have some fun temperatures in the 50s everything's going to be melting it's going to be great i'm really looking forward to it frankly now here we have the European model guides from the Penn State EWOL website. Again for today, showers, thunderstorms, temperatures rising into the upper 40s to lower 50s over the New York City metropolitan area, mid to upper 50s over the Philadelphia metropolitan area for tomorrow and for Sunday. High pressure and control, tranquil weather conditions. Temperatures will range from the mid to upper 30s for lows, lower to mid 50s for highs, do not be surprised if you see a couple of upper 50s in southwestern New Jersey, maybe even 60 degrees. It's going to be absolutely beautiful with sky cloud cover. Very nice out there. Sunday night into Monday, a cold front moves through and we fall back to reality with some rain, snow, showers. Temperatures on Monday will range from the upper 20s to lower 30s for lows, lower to mid 40s for highs. Then the cold air really presses in. For Tuesday, we have a disturbance with the potential for some scattered snow showers or light snow. Not looking like a big storm right at this time, but this disturbance needs to be watched like they have been all winter. Look for temperatures in the upper teens to lower 20s for lows, lower to mid 30s for highs. Wednesday, unfortunately Wednesday, we do have another storm trying to pop up here. Again, this looks like a light to moderate snow type threat here. I'm not really all that impressed with it. But considering the trends of this winter, we're going to have to really watch it. Not an optimal pattern here for a winter storm. But basically the way it's been this winter, if it wants to snow, it will snow. We do have a ridge in the right place. We certainly have plenty of disturbances. Blocking isn't all that great in the northern Atlantic, but it hasn't been all winter. So this disturbance here needs to be watched for Wednesday. Temperatures looking like the lower to mid 20s for lows, mid 30s for highs. Then we get to Thursday, we get a break with high pressure and control. Could be a few scattered snow showers here and there. Temperatures in the upper teens to lower 20s for lows, upper 20s to mid 30s for highs. Now there is potential for another storm by next weekend around March 1st. Now remember I said yesterday, orientation and timing is key. That's why it is way too early to put out snow maps or that map or threat maps or anything of that nature. Okay, and we have a perfect example of this is the Zero Z European model guidance that went from a major storm to no storm. Why? Well, you see this disturbance right here? We'll backtrack here. 
That's our storm. Here's our polar disturbance. In other models, these two interacted. In this one, in this run of models from uh, last night, they do not. And so you end up with no storm. And then the pattern shifts where you get an interaction more towards the plains. That forces the storm track north, and we end up getting warmer. Which one's right? This is why we have to wait. We have to wait a little bit. Use some patience. It's okay. It's about seven to eight days out. We'll see how the pattern evolves. The potential is there. A lot of the teleconnections suggest it could be a storm. But as always with winter storms, timing is key. And if you have one thing off, the whole storm falls apart. So we'll have to keep an eye on it and see how it evolves as we move forward over the next several days. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. You can follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and LinkedIn. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.